It was a song from Poland. It was the morning after Yom Kippur, in the dark before dawn, and the beetle, as always, was the first one in shul, preparing for morning prayers. The tall shadows of the wax candles were dancing that morning. Everything the man seemed completely oblivious, oblivious to everything around him, everything apart from a moving melody he was singing to himself. I am back in time, some 50 years ago, to when the Rebbe taught this song. It was a precious moment, and it was timeless. Yes, I truly believe it was. So sing it with me, dear friend. Let it carry you away, even today, so many years later. Listen to it carefully, and you will hear what I heard then. A song of the inspired soul. Let me tell you how the Rebbe would teach a song. I remember it like yesterday. Simchas Torah night. After the Hakafos had come to an end, I hadn't thought they could end. Such energy and happiness and dancing, but they had. Then the Rebbe re-entered the room, unannounced. He asked for something to stand on, but the only thing we could find was a milk crate. He stepped onto the milk crate and said that he wanted to teach us a song. Darkecho Elokeinu. It is your way, God, to delay your wrath. Words from the Kol Nidre prayer. Solemn words, pleading words. This next song, the Rebbe told us, came from the Caucasus Mountains. It was composed by Shamil, a wild, fearless rebel who terrified the mighty Russian authorities. One day, the Russians lured him into a trap. They said they came for peace, but instead, they captured him and sent him into exile to a distant, unfamiliar land reducing him to the drudgery of the day-to-day. -day. The mighty Shamil's wings had been clipped. But only his wings, not his heart. His heart still yearned for the day he would be free again, for when his wings would heal, for when he would fly once more. To hear the Neshama sing. And if we could hear her speak, 
What would she tell us about herself? Oh, but the Nashoma does speak. Just not about herself. Her existence in this world is not for her own pleasure, but for the Almighty, to realize his vision for the world he created, to make the mundane a dwelling for the divine. Hear closely, my young friend. To me, this is the essence of the Rebbe's teachings. He taught us how we need not surrender to the cosmos if we can change it. He taught us how regardless of background, regardless of stature, regardless of the level of knowledge, everyone can participate in this enterprise of the Almighty. And most importantly, that we need not be perfect to do so. He taught us that this is the gift of teshuva. And so let me leave you with one last niggin. The niggin of Tzomo Lachonafshi. It was composed two centuries ago by the first Rebbe of Lubavitch, Rebbe Shnir Zolman. Yet it was lost to the chaos of history. Until the Rebbe taught it to us once more. When he would sing it with us by his farrengans, the entire room would soar as if we all had been given wings. First the Rebbe would sing, then us. The Rebbe again, us again. Almost a conversation, but a conversation of song, a conversation of souls, the type of conversation that lives on forever. My soul thirsts for you. Words of the psalmist from when he was hiding for his life, when he yearned to be close to the Shekhinah, the Almighty's presence. Words spoken for us, for those times when we yearn for a memory so dear, but so distant. Came back on.